Welcome to Municipal Affairs. I'm Christopher Brown. In November, members of the Rural Municipalities of Alberta will be gathering in Edmonton for their annual fall convention. This year brings a significant change. As Ponoka County Reeve Paul McLaughlin, after years of dedicated service to the organization, steps down as president. As candidates announce their bids for the RMA presidency, we will be speaking with them about their leadership styles, their vision for the organization, and how they intend to guide Alberta's rural municipalities into the future. Today, we are joined by Jason Schneider, Reeve of Vulcan County and currently Director of District 1 for RMA, to hear his aspirations to lead the rural municipalities of Alberta. Attention Saskatchewan. This election season, Municipal Affairs is hitting the road in partnership with SUMA for the Saskatchewan Provincial Election. Join us on election night for live coverage straight from Regina on YouTube featuring exclusive insights from municipal leaders and stakeholders across the province. We will be capturing their reaction to the results and be diving into what the new provincial government means for municipalities. Plus, this fall, we will be traveling across Saskatchewan to hear directly from local leaders about the issues that matter most to you. Plus, this fall, we will be traveling across Saskatchewan starting September 30th to hear directly from local leaders like yourself about the issues that matter most. This is your election covered like never before. Municipal Affairs, your trusted voice from the grassroots to the government. Reeve, I want to thank you so much for sitting down with me today and talking about the, uh, your run for presidency of the president of the RMA. I want to start right there. What made you decide to put your name in to be the next president of the rural municipalities of Alberta? Yeah, well, uh, thank you for having me on. Uh, uh, yeah, it's it's been a little bit of a, the last uh, month or so has been a little bit of a whirlwind as I've been putting everything together. But uh, um, yeah, yeah, I've I've been a big fan of RMA since the day I got elected back in 2013. Um, I've actually had the privilege of sitting on the board as the Southern Alberta Director since 2022. So uh, I've become pretty uh, uh, pretty passionate about the RMA and the good work that it does. And uh, yeah, when when the opportunity came forward uh, for a vacancy in the presidency spot, I figured you know this would be a, this would be a good time. I think I've got uh, I got a lot that I can offer uh, in that position. So I put my name forward, and uh, I guess we'll see in November if the uh, the membership agrees with that or not. Uh, but uh, until then, uh, it's been it's been a good process so far. Had lots of good conversations with our members. Uh, our our members love to love to talk about rural Alberta, and uh, and so it's been uh, it's been it's been good. It's been a, a lot of a lot of time on the phone, but uh, I've enjoyed every minute of it so far so we're going to talk about some of the issues in a few minutes here but i want to continue talking about you why you why why does the reeve of vulcan county believe he is the best person to lead rma over the next two years yeah, no, uh, definitely. I, I think it, it shocked a few people, probably even when I put my name forward for a director, uh, someone from Vulcan County. Uh, you know, we're, we're kind of a county that's in the middle of middle of everything or middle of nowhere, but close to everything. Um, and uh, yeah, but, um, you know, it's just over the four years, it's really kind of uh, the experience that I've gained and the relationships that I've built. Um, I just just feel that, uh, you know, that experience and uh, is uh, really pushed me to, to put my name forward. And uh, I'm, I'm sure it's, it's shocked a few people, but uh, I did also have quite a few people who were kind of giving me that uh, nudge, nudge, uh, you know, that, uh, you know, that uh, I should give some consideration. And uh, I, I probably uh, resisted it for for as long as I could. Um, I mean, biggest thing is this is it's a big time commitment. I mean, you, you sitting on the board, I know what kind of time commitment it is um, to take that next step up. That was really one of my biggest reservations. But uh, I was actually probably my wife was the one that was kind of like, she's like, well, like, of course you have to run. And I'm like, well, <laughs> like, well, wait a, wait a minute here. Like, you know, it's a big commitment. And she's like, you know, you know, it's just one of those opportunities that I think if you, if you, do, if you don't jump and you don't give it a shot, uh, I think it's one that I would really regret myself regret not uh not pursuing so uh yeah put my name forward and uh yeah they're not the only one so i i have to i have to get back out on the campaign trail which is a little bit of a change uh, uh unfortunately in rural alberta there's a lot of uh, apathy and uh, usually you get it by acclamation and uh I, I don't know if i 
should really uh, be too proud of admitting this, but I, I actually haven't had the campaign since 2013. So it's a, uh, it's a little bit of a change, but uh, like I said, it's a, uh, it's been great. I mean, just the conversations I've been able to have so far, it's, it's really, uh, it kind of has just really been um, reassuring that, you know, uh, you know, I, I do think the RMA is on, on a good path and uh, you know, if I can, uh, If I can help lead it or I can help push it a little bit up that hill, uh, you know, I'm I'm more than uh, willing to do it. You talk about the time commitment that this position will entitle, and you and I have both seen Paul McLaughlin's schedule of being all over Alberta, but also being all over Canada. How do you see yourself being able to balance the local commitment to the people of Vulcan County, as well as the commitment that you would need to dedicate to the people of the RMA? Because I can imagine that would be a challenge, but do you feel like you're up for it? Oh, for sure. It's, it's a balancing act. I mean, I've, uh, yeah, even, even being a board director, it's amazing how many days you have to be away, but you know, it, it, it works. Um, first of all, I mean, you, you have to have a family and you have to have a council that supports you. And I've, I'm blessed to have both. Um, my, my council has been very, uh, they, they, they have all, when, when I announced I was running every one of them, the first thing they said is what can we do to help? And that's, and that really helps when, you know, you have such a strong council that uh, is just supporting you in that, um, you know, they, they've definitely been flexible around my schedule, but uh, ultimately I, I am elected by the people of Vulcan County. And that is my, that is my priority essentially is uh, to make sure that I am fulfilling my duties there and then, uh, and then fitting in my RMA commitments around there. So it's, it'll be a juggling act, but uh, you know, I've, I've, I've made some adjustments even in my personal life to make sure that uh, if I'm successful, that I'll be able to have the, the commitment. Cause that's, that, that was honestly one of my biggest fears of even considering this was um, I, I can't do something at 80%. Uh, if I'm going to do something, it's gotta be hundred percent. And uh, so it took me, maybe it took me a little bit longer to get all my ducks in a row. But uh, w when I did, uh, I, I do feel that I, I will be able to, uh, to keep that pace going and it's going to be, it's a grind. I mean, you talked to the previous uh, president, Paul, he's uh, it's been, a, it's been a long four years, but you know, when you, when you're working on something you're passionate about, uh, it, it doesn't, it doesn't always feel like work. Uh, some days it feels like work, but majority of the time it, it it's, it's, it's really a passion project. So it makes it a lot easier to, you know, to put in that time and, you know, put on those kilometers. One of the big things that the next president will have to undertake is building a relationship with the uh, premier of the province, but also building a relationship with the cabinet ministers and even the federal government. Paul McLaughlin has uh, left a good uh, platform to build on. But for you, how do you see yourself in building that collaborative uh, approach with this current administration if you are the successful candidate? Yeah, relationships are the, are the number one uh, most important thing for uh, for an organization like the Royal Municipalities of Alberta. And that's where we've had our most success is when we can work hand in hand. Um, we, we've had some very good successes. Uh, I, I think some of the renewable um, conversation, um, we, we worked very well with uh, Minister Newdorf and uh, I think in the end we we came up with something that was was pretty good as, as a group. We, we've had our challenges with some other, other uh, departments, um, but you know, <sighs> We, we, we've got to keep trying. We've got to keep working together. I mean, the 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 key thing that I've always with every MLA or every minister that I've ever spoken with is is that we we need them to be successful. Like we need this provincial government to be successful because uh, when they're successful, Royal Alberta is successful, and vice versa. Um, you know, when when Royal Alberta is rocking and rolling, the province is usually in a pretty good spot because that usually means that the resource industries are doing well. So um, it's really just bringing that that uh, mentality and. You know, I, I do have a bit of an advantage having, you know, the last four years of getting to, getting to know these ministers. Uh, uh, you know, I'm not starting, I wouldn't be starting cold, but uh, it definitely is going to take that time and that effort and, you know, those trips to Edmonton to uh, to make sure that we're keeping those relationships strong. And, uh, and, I, and yeah, like I said, I've, I've done a little bit of the legwork already, but I, I, I do think that it's going to be one of those tasks that it's going to be never, never ending. Um, it always seems that as soon as you know, you get those really good relationships and you're working really well with the province, uh, that silly election comes along and then you have to start all over again. So yeah, it's a, it's a nonstop, but, uh, but extremely important in my opinion. Do you see yourself being able to call a spade a spade and call out what's wrong with the, some legislation? Paul McLaughlin has done that with Bill 18, Bill 20, Bill 21, Bill 22. And it seems like this government is uh, focused on a lot of municipal issues right now. So in the role of president, would you be able to tell Minister McIver or Premier Smith that you're encroaching in our territories a bit? Yeah, I, I think... Uh... 
I might have, I probably lost a little bit of my filter that I might have had in 2013 when I first got elected. I, I think, uh, you know, I, I've done this long enough that uh, I, I don't think candy coating anything really helps uh, in the long run. I, I think you got to be pretty blunt and honest. And I know uh, I've had some very blunt conversations with Minister McIver on uh, on certain issues. And and you know what, I I do think in the end he he does appreciate that. Um, and I think most I think most ministers do. I mean, they they got a ton on their plate. Uh, they they don't want they don't want to be playing games. They just want to, you know, they want to know where you're at and, you know, we're hoping to know where they're at. And, uh, you know, when, when we can both have that kind of relationship, uh, it saves a whole lot of time and it makes things a whole lot easier for uh, both sides. That's for sure. One of the big things that's come out of RMA over the last, I would say, five years is this reoccurring theme about unpaid oil and uh, gas property taxes to rural municipalities. Um, it does not seem like it's a, a thing that's getting solved. And there's one thing that I can count on in this uh, yearly calendar is my taxes. And the RMA is going to send me another newsletter saying that unpaid oil and gas property taxes are going up and these zombie companies are not paying their fair share. How do you see yourself being able to try to work with the AER to solve this issue because when I talk to your members, and I say your members as in RMA members, these figures are growing every year, and it's coming on the backs of the residents of the people of Alberta. Yeah, it's uh, insane that we're still talking about this. Uh, we're so being Vulcan County, being in the south end of the province, uh, our oil and gas, uh, in particular our shallow gas assets, they're a little more mature. Uh, so uh, I've been living this dream for eight years as a municipal councillor, uh, four years on the board. Uh, it's it's absolutely ridiculous. Um, you know, we we definitely have made progress. Uh, I, I think the the provincial government acknowledges there's an issue, and that's that's the first step. Uh, second step is they've given us they've given us some some tools, but they haven't been they they haven't been what we've needed because it's still been occurring. Uh, we still have companies that should not be operating here, and uh, I, I think my my philosophy is the exact same as as kind of where Army has been at. If you can't pay your taxes and you don't pay your surface leases, you shouldn't be operating in Alberta. If you're going to be making a profit off Albertans' resources, you, those are two non-negotiables. And uh, yeah, I, I I wish I I wish I had a magic bullet because if I would I would have used it already uh, because this is this is ridiculous. But I, I do think that um, you know we we've we've been able to maintain that pressure and and we've been able to every year continually keep showing like hey this is still happening. Um, I, I think that. I think we are going to finally get a solution. Um, and, you know, to be honest with you, I think some of the, the best um, advocacy we've done is almost working with some of the other players in the oil and gas industry because this is making them look bad. I mean, if, you, if you're if you a big player who's doing the right thing and is being a good community member and a good corporate citizen, like they don't want these guys around either. But it just seems to be that we just haven't been able to make that connection between industry and, and the government to to push the bad actors out. And it, because it's it, it isn't the majority. There's... There's a ton of oil and gas companies in this province that are that are just excellent. Um, you know, they don't they're not 10 seconds late on their taxes. And uh, I think they've now got to the point and I think that's what's really going to tip the scale. So um, I I'm an eternal optimist. I, I I think we I think we have a solution coming, I, I hope, because um, it just after eight years of, of this, it's just it's absolute insanity. So um, I will I get I guess the uh, the guarantee that I'll make is I, I'm not going to let it go away. Uh, I will continue to be that squeaky wheel and uh, and uh, hopefully we can finally get that final solution, because, I mean, you know, we, we keep being told it's a very complicated pro, pro, uh, problem. And maybe I, I, I kind of I kind of tend to think that, um, you know, if you don't pay your royalties, you get shut down instantly. I kind of think that uh, if you don't pay your taxes or if you stiff the landowner, um, who didn't really necessarily have a say if you should be able to drill that well or not. Yeah, um, I think if you don't pay him, I think yeah, I think you should just be the, the rug should be pulled out from underneath you. And I know that's uh, you know we've been accused of being a little anti-industry on that, but it's it's really not. And I mean, literally talking with some of the largest operators, they 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 totally agree with us too. But it just we just haven't made that connection. Well, just on that note, if I as a resident don't pay my property taxes in two years. You literally sell my house underneath me. So how is that different than doing that to an yeah. oil company? I, what's good for the goose is good for the gander a little bit. Completely agree. And it's just, they fall into a weird category because they, you know, if they've got an asset that's cost more to clean up than what it's worth, they kind of go, well, well, take it. Like, you know, 
repossess my oil well that uh, you know I don't want to have to pay a million dollars to clean up and and that's that's not right because the whole concept of it, this was that uh, it was you make your money you clean up after yourself and then you you know move on to something else and uh, industry and especially some industry players haven't fulfilled that uh, that part of the promise of the, the clean up and, and go away part. <laughs> One of the big things that I'm hearing from members across, and it's a, a relatively a new area of concern that Reeves and counselors and rural municipalities I'm talking to are addressing, is healthcare. Healthcare, mm -hmm. the closures of rural and remote health clinics, health hospitals. Uh, it seems to be a big priority for a lot of rural uh, MDs and counties. What role do you see RMA playing in helping the province address some of these closures of emergency rooms or even doctor shortages? Well, in a perfect world, I don't think municipalities should have to worry about that at all because that's uh, <laughs> under the whole MGA. That's not really uh, that doesn't really get assigned to municipalities. But the reality is, we've had to step up and we've had to play that role and we've had to backfill in a lot of situations uh, for less than adequate rural health care and. Um, I, I am happy to see that the premier has started to make some changes. Now, are they the changes that if I was premier, I was going to make? I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. But I, I think that the, the, there is a much more acknowledgement by Premier Smith that uh, rural health care needs to, to uh, really get a little bit of a makeover here. And uh, we've been able to, I, I was fortunate enough to be appointed to the EMS um, Standing Committee with the Minister of Health on behalf of RMA and our, our members. Uh, so over the last uh, few months, we've been, we've been kind of trying to really pick away at, at that aspect of the health care. And, and it really seems that uh, I, I do feel that there's a willingness. They they're actually listening, which is which is a great step forward because uh, about four or five years ago, you know, it it was a little rough. Like it was kind of a let the adults take care of the healthcare and you you municipal guys just you know go do your thing. But uh, it does seem that they are looking for partners. And you know what, uh, rural Alberta is a great partner. I mean, we we want to get stuff done. We don't we don't need to cut a ribbon and we don't need a photo op. We just want to we want to get stuff done. And uh, and I really hope that they they do continue to work with these uh, these rural members and listen to what they're saying because I mean. You know, when, when you're sitting at a desk in Edmonton or in Calgary, um, you know, your your perspective isn't necessarily uh, completely accurate. You know, you, you probably know the urban setting very well. But, uh, you know, when you get out into, you know, when you get out into Carston or Milk River or, you know, Mackenzie County, like it's it's a whole different world. And that's why, you know, we can be we can really be partners. And I, I really hope that 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 trend continues because uh, it, it wasn't happening before. But, um, you know, hopefully together we can really start to fix some of these things. And, you know, this problem didn't occur overnight. Like this is this has been this has been 20 years of not paying very close attention to healthcare that we are where today. So, I mean, it's going to be it's going to be take some time. And I think that's one thing that, you know, I've always stressed with members who are, you know, they're impatient because we're, we we want to get this fixed. This is stupid. Like we want to get this fixed, but it's going to it is going to take some time. But and we're going to have to be at the table. And, uh, you know, so far we are. And. Obviously, if uh, if elected as the army president, uh, I will definitely be at that table. And while it, you know, it maybe isn't 100 uh, percent of municipal purview, it impacts our members in a huge way. So we we will be there and we'll be we'll be that squeaky wheel and reminding them of, you know, what that rural perspective is. So so I wanted to talk about two different subjects, but I need to talk about one particular because you just mentioned southern Alberta, especially in Cardston and even Milk River. And that is water. Water, 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 and particularly for yourself as the Reeve of Vulcan County, you know water is as important to farmers and agricultural producers than ever before with drought conditions that we've seen this year and even the drying of some river bends. It is water. Premier uh, Smith, Rebecca Schultz, Environment Minister, have been working with municipalities. Do you see yourself being able to work with the province, but also your urban counterparts to address this issue to ensure that everyone gets their fair share? Yeah, I, I think that this is one thing that we know. We, you, you, there's always there's always an urban versus rural mentality sometimes, but I, I think water is one that I, I think we, 
I, I think we can easily work together because it does benefit both of us. And Minister Schultz has been absolutely fantastic. Uh, she's she's very good at consulting and getting the right people in the room. And uh, that's that's her superpower. And we've we've been able to, and I know I've been able to participate in some of the some of the water um, you know agreements uh, that are going on right now between Canada and the U.S. I've been able to sit on that, uh, which has been an absolute eye opener, just how that all works and and the politics that can get in water, but. Ultimately, you know, we we've I hope we've learned a lesson because the, the, my, my biggest fear in this is we've gone through a really bad drought. And as soon as the drought's over, which it, I, I won't say it's completely over, but I mean, a lot of areas uh, we ended up getting more rainfall than they were expecting. And the, the message the last time I spoke with Minister Schultz is once this turns around and it, it probably will because it's southern Alberta, we, we have dry years and wet years and we don't know which when they're going to be there, um, is that we, we got to keep having these conversations. And uh, I, I know she's completely on agree with that, uh, in agreement with that. And that's where, you know, as, as an association, I think we need to keep pushing that one as much as possible, because the, the reality is we're going to have another dry year like where we'd be silly to say that this is never going to happen again. It's like it's going to happen again. This is Alberta. Uh, but how are we going to get through that? And, and the reality is, you know, we're going to need we're going to need more storage. We're going to need better, you you know, utilization of the water. And so that's something that, I, you know, we've been involved with as an organization with the RMA so far. And it's going to be extremely important to continue. And and really, I, I, I haven't seen that urban versus rural on that. Like, I think this is one where we can we can really all work together. And particularly when you have a minister that wants to work with everybody, uh, I think, in the next year or two, we have a huge opportunity to really get some of these some of these plans in place because for the next time that it's dry. Before we turn to RMA as the organization, you will be leading a group of very diverse municipalities across this province, from all the way to Mackenzie to Cypress Hill, from Crow's Nest Pass all the way up to the RM of Wood Buffalo, and every municipal rural municipality in between. How do you see yourself leading a diverse group of individual organizations when they all have their own unique needs and wants and concerns? Because we talked about three big macro issues, but they all have very micro issues. How do you see yourself being able to bring them all together to address the common themes as an organization? Yeah, that's that is always a tricky one because this province is diverse, and I, and I, and I mean we 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 say that and people go, you know, yeah, it's diverse. But I mean, I was up in Latrite here a, a couple months ago, and I mean that's a different world, right? Like, I mean, I I'm, I'm used to southern Alberta. That's where I grew up, or that's where I farm, and and it's it's a different world up there. But you know, we we have a lot of things in common, and I and I think that's what's been able to make our RMA as successful as it has is that while we do have differences. We have a lot of things in common as well, and and really, it's it's when those things we have in common, our members are have been extremely supportive, and you know they might, it might not be a hundred percent the way that they would do it, but they can still they can support it for the greater good, and that's one thing I've always admired about the RMA members is we've really been able to, uh, we've been really been able to you know put our differences aside and focus on the issues that are impacting us, and uh, you know as an organization, obviously if there's if there's local issues that you know we can be of assistance of, uh, you know we've always tried to, and I mean some. Sometimes it's just it's it's usually just as simple as getting people in contact with someone else who's already been through it. I mean that's that's always the 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 most amazing thing at uh, our RMA convention is that you know you, you think you're on an island, right? You you think you know your your fire department isn't isn't functioning 100, percent and you know it's 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 eating you away, right? Because it's I mean that's a big thing in your world, and then you get to you get to there and you talk to every municipality, you go, oh yeah yeah. We had that issue too, and this is what we did to solve it. And it's and it's really, uh, you know, it's those those things in common that really I think we could all benefit from. And and that's why I always challenge my council for every year we go to the convention and say, what's the issue that we're struggling with? And you know what it is? It's water agreements. It's inter inter municipal collaboration framework. It's like talk to five municipalities, and then everyone come back, and it's always amazing. Usually, everyone comes back and goes we don't have that bad, you know, we're, you know, someone else has it way worse. Uh, so yeah, it, it's really just, a, it's just trying to, you know, find, find the things that we can work on uh, common and, and thankfully our members have been so supportive that I think that it makes it a lot easier than a task that it, it, it potentially could be. The role of the presidency is not just about advocacy. It's also about working with the organization and RMA is uh, growing at a speed that I don't think even they expected 10 years ago. New building just opened up in NISCU. You have your canoe procurement program, which is growing at a substantial speed. Um, 
how do you see yourself working with the administration side to ensure that the growth that has been done over the last few years continues to grow the organization? Yeah. I, so four years ago when I got elected to the board, I remember going to the orientation and I mean, I, I knew RMA. I didn't, you know, I, I didn't know all the ins and outs and, you know, they start talking about all the things they were doing in the growth. And they just said like, we're on a growth trajectory that like nobody would have ever imagined. And they were totally wrong because like they said, the growth was going to go like this. It went like that. <laughs> and uh, over the last four years, like I think every, all the goals and all the things that we worked on, you know, on our business side, it, we, we've totally exceeded them. And, and uh, it's, First off, I mean, we have an incredible team. Um, you know, the, the staff that work for Army, they're, they're some of the most passionate uh, people that I, I know. Um, they're, they're great. They, they reflect our members' passion 100%. And, uh, you know, they've, you know they, they like being successful too, just like our members like being successful. So um, I got, got a bit of an advantage over the last four years, being able to uh, get to know, the, know all the people that are working there quite well. Uh, it, it definitely would make it a lot easier, you know, if, to, to jump into that presidency uh, seat. Uh, you know, I, I'm not coming, not coming in cold. And uh, so, yeah, I, I think that... Uh, you know, I, I'd have a little bit of advantage there and, and, um, you know, hopefully keep that momentum going because I, uh, you know, that's, you know, we, we do focus a lot on advocacy, but the business part is an important thing too. I mean, we're, we're kind of that ultimate co-op model where, um, you know, except that we, we just save, we try to save our members the money up front. Like, it's not like, you know, a Calgary co-op or a UFA where, you know, they hold your money to the end of the year and then decide how much they're going to give back. We, we kind of went the opposite way and it's been so successful and it's really been, it's been really interesting, you know, as we've, our program has expanded across this country. I've had the opportunity to go to uh, Saskatchewan and Manitoba and, uh, you know, to be part of some of those trade shows. And it's just incredible. Like they're just, they're like, this is the way it's supposed to be. We're supposed to be working together. And that's, and that's just such a, it's, it's so nice to hear because, you know, that's kind of been always the mentality. Like we kind of took it for granted, but when you start to hear from other uh, municipal uh, leaders from across this country uh, about, you know, just, you know, how much time it saves them, how much money it's saving them, how, how it would just make sense, like buying together, like we're all small, but if all of a sudden now you have a hundred or 200 or a thousand, you know, of these groups all buying together, all of a sudden, you know, you're starting to get, you're starting to get the, the super special Costco savings. You're not getting the, you know, corner store uh, discount. So it's uh, yeah, it's, but you know, it's a balancing act. It's, it's really, uh, it's one of those things that we have, we do have so much going on as an organization that, you know, you have to keep on top of everything. And it's a, it's a big task, uh, but you, you know, you just have to make sure that you're keeping that balance because ultimately um, we, we do report to our members. So we have to, you know, we have to keep them happy on, on all fronts. And uh, I think we, I think we've been pretty successful at that juggle, but it's uh, it is something we, we've definitely had a lot of conversations about over the years, making sure we're not stretching ourselves too thin in any of these areas. What's the difference between a president uh, McLaughlin and a president Schneider? What is going to be, how are you going to put your stamp on the organization that's different than Paul's? Well, I mean, this might come as a surprise, but uh, I am not Paul. Uh, I <laughs> there is only one Paul. Uh, I think we can all uh, be appreciative of that. And I mean, he's 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 done such a great job for this organization. Uh, he's just been kind of that right leader at the right time. A lot of the issues that we've dealt with, um, you know, I've been right in his wheelhouse. Uh, you know, he's he's extremely knowledgeable on the environmental side, and they. Being in the middle of a drought, ah, that's kind of uh, that was right in his wheelhouse where he could really speak uh, as, as an expert on that. Um, so uh, yeah, it's it's going to be a little bit different. Um, you know, I, I'm I'm a big relationship guy, and I mean that for the most part has been RMA's um, um, mo. Like that's what that's what we do. But um, I. I think I like to operate a little bit more behind the scenes and maybe Paul does. Paul is a, is a media darling. Uh, <laughs> I can, I can do an interview, but uh, I, I, I'm not a Paul McLaughlin in front of the camera. So uh, I definitely, in, in my job as Reeve at Vulcan County, I've definitely tried to uh, stay out of the newspaper, uh, get, get your work done behind the scenes because that usually means you're doing a good job. If, if nobody knows, uh, if, if you're not in the newspaper, that means you're doing a good job. Uh, so I, I think, uh, yeah, I, I won't be, I probably won't be the media darling that he is, but, uh, but once again, I mean, if, if need be, we can we can do that. But uh, I think uh, my my focus will be a lot more on building those relationships. Uh, not only we, you know in this province, but I think especially um, we we have an opportunity, especially if the federal government does change here uh, in a, in a year or so, uh, uh, we have an opportunity there to really uh, bring forward some rural issues. And uh, so uh, yeah, so that'll be that would be one of my my focus is just making sure those relationships are are good and and be ready when when the time comes, especially on the federal level. 
you mentioned the federal government, and I was going to ask this a little bit later, but it'll play in this wheelhouse. Uh, as the president of the rural municipalities of Alberta, you will also be sitting on the board of the Federation of Canadian Municipalities. And that means you will be in the halls of the House of Commons advocating not only here in Edmonton, but in Ottawa to the Liberal government under Justin Trudeau and potentially whoever the next government is after this uh, federal election, whenever it will be called. Um, do you have good connections in Ottawa already that you can work on those advocacy work starting on day one, or will that be something you'll have to build off of uh, as a new president? Well, I, I think the advantages over the last few years is I've been able to, you know, get some of those relationships built already. And uh, so, yeah, I, I definitely think it's something you could hit the ground running on or I could hit the ground running on. Um, obviously, the the federal is a little different of a beast. And uh, but uh, really, I, I think our, our message is the same for them is, you know, um, we want to be your partner. Like we want to work with you. And I, I mean, I, I know sometimes that <laughs> we, there, there might be members that don't necessarily think you should uh, work with certain political uh, parties, but the, the reality is, I mean, we're, we're going to work with, or I, I'm going to work with whoever, um, you know, whether you agree with their ideology or not, um, you know, my, my job as, as an, as an elected official is to represent my people. Uh, my job as a board member has been to represent our members and my job as a president would be the, the exact same. So uh, yeah, it will, it, but uh, you know, all of a sudden an, an election at the, in the federal government, all of a sudden everything, everything changes very quickly. And, uh, and I think we, you know, whoever's the president is going to have to act very quickly to, to get those relationships uh built or and uh you know meet the people they need to and then make sure that we get that real message and and you know I, I think there's a lot of opportunity um you know speaking with you know the the rural municipalities in Saskatchewan and even the association of Manitoba we we have a lot in common too like there's a lot of things that I think that if we can all get in alignment and, and be advocating jointly I think our voice is going to be heard a lot more because uh, if we're all trying to do it individually um you know it gets lost in the shuffle um it's easy to ignore 12 people it's really hard to ignore 12 people show up in the same room and are all talking about the same thing. Uh, yeah, you have to listen. So I, I really do think that that's something that uh, I would definitely can, would, would be doing is, is bringing in our partners um, from Saskatchewan, Manitoba, Ontario. Um, I mean, even the Maritimes, I mean, we've, we've, we've developed some, some pretty cool relationships with them just with some of our business uh, dealings that we've done and them joining our programs. Um, I think there's an opportunity because, you, you know, you talk to some of them, they're, they're facing the exact same thing, low population, lots of infrastructure. Uh, and, you know, it, it's, it's, uh, you know, they sometimes they just get forgotten about because I mean, it's, uh, it's the big cities that uh, can holler the loudest and they have the most voters. Um, but it doesn't mean that, uh, you know, <laughs> we, we don't need a little help from time to time. Uh, there are so many uh, organizational elections going on right now. So I can imagine whoever is elected at SARM, at SUMA, at AMM is all going to be different by the time I say something. So I'm not even going to say who the current president <laughs> is. So let's just go from there. My final yeah. question for you, Reeve, and it's we, we talked about it earlier, but I want you to pitch. Why should people put their trust in you? And I know you haven't ran an election since 2013, so maybe you're a little <laughs> bit rusty at this, but... Why should people? Why should the members of RMA put their trust in you at this year's upcoming uh, convention in Edmonton in November? Yeah, no, I, yeah, I, I'm probably a little bit rusty on the sales pitch, but uh, I, you know the message that I've been um, giving to the, the people that I've been talking to is that. Um, I believe the importance of RMA is has never been more important, and I think it's going to continue to become even more important. Um, the, the the reality is the demographics of Alberta, in particularly, are going the opposite way. Um, you know, it, we're seeing a hyper urbanization, um, and uh, but it, rural Alberta serves a very important part of this, and so I, I think that's where we we've really become that rural voice, and I think that that is extremely important. We need to continue that, and. You know, I, I believe that I bring the experience and I believe I bring the passion. Um, I've I've never missed an RMA convention. Uh, I, I'm i a 100 percent a believer in the work, the good work they do. And uh, I just want to see this momentum going forward. And uh, and I hope that the experience and the relationships that I have built, uh, you know, not only with the government, uh, but with our members, I, I hope that, uh, you know, they can see that, you know, this that I, I truly am passionate about this. 
Um, and, uh, you know, I've, I've, uh, I'm gonna. I'll make the commitment to them, and uh, I'll I'll do this in November when I'm giving my speeches. That uh, you know, I I I'm 100 in this. Um, I I I want to see this this keep going forward and keep this momentum going. And uh, I I'll yeah I I'll work tirelessly to do that. Um, and yeah, I, I'll. The other thing is that uh, you know we'll continue to build these relationships. That's number one. It's 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 so important. This is when we've been the most successful. Is when we can be partners, um, and uh, you know that that will be my my thing. I'll I'll make the trip up the number two highway uh, as many times as necessary uh, to to go and meet with uh, any minister at the drop of a hat uh, because it is it is important that we are at that table and that that world voice is being is being heard because uh, it, it can get forgotten about. It's easy to get forgotten about. You know it's. It's a lot more exciting what's going on in Calgary and Edmonton right now. Uh, and, uh, but, you know, we, we are the, I, I really do believe that rural Alberta is the engine and uh, the times that Alberta has been the most successful is when uh, rural Alberta is really, uh, you know, firing on all cylinders. Um, but also to the members, you know, if, if it comes that point that, you know, we are being ignored or we're being put in the corner, um, I'm, I'll fight for you too. I, I think people have probably got to know me well enough over the years. And, you know, the ones that have had to sit with me on committees, I know that, uh, you know, I'm, I'm all about building those relationships, but uh, if it comes to that point, we need to fight, uh, I've, like I said, I, I've kind of lost my filter over the last uh, the last eleven years. Uh, I'm I, I can uh, I can be forceful when I need to and blunt when I need to be, and uh, and uh, I will happily do that on behalf of our members because uh, I think, like I said, this is this is extremely important, and I think RMA is just uh, it's just an incredible organization. I just I even when you talk to people who aren't our members and you talk about what we're doing and like it's it it blows people's minds and and you know we I think we we sometimes take it for granted because this is all we've known. I mean. Yeah, we, we always work with our neighbors. Like, why wouldn't you work with your neighbors? But the reality is, across Canada, a lot of municipalities do not work with their neighbors whatsoever. And that's, you know, it's puzzling because that's just how we were always growing up. And so when you gain that perspective of just of what we're doing and what we're doing is so unique and special, uh, it really just gives that motivation. And uh, it really makes, you know, being on the board a lot of fun. Um, it's a lot of hard work, but it's a lot of fun. And it's it's really pushed me to, uh, you know, throw my name forward and uh, for the for the big chair and, you uh, Said we'll see we'll see November if the if the membership uh, agrees with that or not but uh, you know uh, it, it really uh, I regardless of what happens uh, this this organization is in is going to be in good hands we our members uh, our members are just the greatest they just absolutely uh, have supported this organization through the years and uh, and that's why we've been successful so uh, um, yeah it's that's a maybe a long winded pitch like I said I'm rusty it's been it's been eleven years but uh, uh, yeah I, I hope that uh, I hope that uh, you know that 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 uh, conveys to our, our members and uh, and uh, yeah they're, they're gonna have a hard choice yeah anytime you have five uh, five candidates uh, you know there's a there's a lot of options so uh, I guess we will we'll see what happens during your uh, talking about standing up for your members I honestly thought you were gonna quote Patrick Swayze from Dirty Dancing it's like nobody puts rural communities in a corner and I was like if you do that I would I would try to find an open seat I'd run for it and I would vote for you just for quoting Patrick Swayze but there you go. so so this is this is weird Chris and I, I will send you my I should send you my speech that's been working but uh, I I I I have a quote from Patrick Swayze in my speech because that, that was one of the, because <laughs> yeah. I mean, that, and that, and that ultimately is, it, it's a, it's a funny, a funny quote. Yeah. Nobody, nobody puts the roll over in the corner. And I think that's, uh, I think that's what our members, uh, yeah, nobody puts our role municipality members in a corner. Uh, I think uh, anybody who's tried to do that's probably got a rude awakening because uh, our members are passionate. Our, our members, you know, we, we're, we're so lucky um, at a municipal level. And I think, um, it gets lost sometimes, especially for the provincial guys, is we can do what's best for our residents. Like, I don't got to vote party lines. I like I have been in my, since 2013, in 11 years, I have never been told how to vote. And I, every time I voted on behalf of my members. And uh, so that's why that, that funny quote from Patrick Swayze kind of resonated. And, and it's hilarious that you mentioned it. Maybe, maybe I gave too much of my speech up already because you, you went straight to it. Maybe we think the same. I don't know. This is maybe scary, but <laughs> there you go. But yeah, it was it wasn't it wasn't my speech, and uh, I don't know. I, I'm I think I'm still going to use it because it's a great quote. So you might see it again in November. There you go, uh, Reeve. I want to thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for taking time out of your busy schedule. Uh, I'm looking forward to watching this election unfold, but also the results on. I believe it's November seventh when the election actually takes place, or the November uh, November sixth, one or the other. But I, I truly take uh, appreciate you taking time and sitting down with me. 
Thank you, Chris. I really appreciate the opportunity and uh, we'll uh, see you in November. Thank you so much for tuning in for another episode of Municipal Affairs. We truly hope you've enjoyed today's conversation. And if you haven't already, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you never miss an upcoming episode. Your support helps us to continue to grow and bring you more important conversations like you heard today. So stay connected, stay informed, and we'll see you next time here on Municipal Affairs.